Today's video is a fun one. It's actually a challenge that uh, a teacher of mine gave several of us to create this list of several things that we would want to share with the younger version of ourselves. So if you could go back in time to yourself at about 12, 13, 14, what would you say to yourself, right? What would you wish that you knew before um, puberty and the mess and for some people, it might not be a mess, but it just, there's all these things that we become more self-conscious and self-aware and we're like more insecure. And what if, what are those things that you could just, would transform your life if you knew them earlier? So my mind first went into, don't do this or do that, you know, but really zooming out of that. What are those key concepts that would help in any situation to stay grounded and rooted and centered and just know that you're not only okay, you're fantastic and you're exactly where you're supposed to be. So what are those key concepts? That is what I wanna share with you guys today. So let's dive right in. So the first one that I would share with the younger version of me is that it's okay to cherry pick. And this is really something that I haven't even realized until I was like 28 because going into even my spirituality and my spiritual path, I felt like I there was all these different school of thoughts and yes, they all say the same thing and um, it's basically, there are different practices teaching the same thing. However, I still felt like it wasn't okay to cherry pick. There was this like, you have to stick to one particular way so that you can actually get anywhere. And it took me a while to really hear my own voice that this practice from here feels good and this practice from here feels good and this one feels good and it's okay that they're all over the place and I'm cherry picking because they're all tools and I'm actually there choosing what is right for me. I get to create my own version of what I want and I don't have to go along with somebody else's because they're all interpretations. And I remember experiencing this as I was a teenager, actually, but before, maybe around 11, 12, I remember watching these TV shows and all those female characters that seemed to have, uh, or the male characters as well. It's like there was a group of friends and there was always like the pretty one, the sporty one, the smart one, the funny one. There was like five of them. And it felt like, and it was just repetitive throughout different series, different shows, different movies. And I felt like, okay, so this is what I have to pick from. So who do I want to be out of these five? And that, that felt like that was it. That's all I had to work with. But in reality, that isn't so. And now to an adult, it's like, well, of course it isn't so. You can choose whatever you want to be. Right, but how often do we actually do that? I work with so many people that are still in that place of, I can only be this thing or that thing. So it's an either or, while it can be a yes and so my first one would be that it's okay to cherry pick it's that's how we learn that's how we get to experience what is it that i want to be by not going with a particular school of thought but just what is right for me and tuning into what you want while utilizing all these different tools that are available and fun and you get to play with which brings me to number two number two the thing that i would tell my younger self would be that nobody actually knows anything you think they do you think that you would have it all figured out and then you realize that nobody does and then you realize that that's actually the most powerful place to be in because i feel like we grew up and we're like oh i'm gonna have it all figured out and then you grow up and you're like oh damn it i don't have it all figured out but i'm really inspired by some of the people that i get to witness who uh, are retired who are over 60 and they're there I don't know anything and I'm learning and this is fun and they get to live this best version of their lives because they're in that place of I don't know I'm figuring it out I'm trying something new this is part of life well I personally was um, I came up from grew up in this place of you have to know you have to have it all figured out and I thought that okay when I grew up then I'll be able to do it and there was all this pressure of I don't have anything figured out and then there was this, that's the fun of it. Point number three, 
Whatever anybody says or does or thinks is never about you. And this is something that we know conceptually, right? Like in theory, but really when you feel it. I know that from my uh, countless hours of inner work, going back into what does that mean for me? What am I making that mean? A powerful one that I want to share with you guys was actually with a client who was speaking about this possibility of his children dying, hypothetically. And I asked him in that moment, why would you be upset by that? A really weird and blunt question, but that's what I asked. And wait for this. And he said, well, what do you mean? I would be upset that my kids are dead. What would it mean for you? And going at this back and forth a few times, he was able to get to this place of it would mean that I wasn't able to prove to my dad that I was a better father. And that it would mean that I'm as much of a horrible dad as he was. And that was really a powerful realization. We never do things for other people. It's not about them. Similarly as nobody ever does something that is about us. It's all, we're just here playing and navigating through our own projections and through our own stories. And we get, again, we get to have fun with this. So be free because you know that it's just about you finding your truth and it's about them, giving them the dignity of their own process, knowing that nothing's about you. Asking how is it that I'm showing up and from that place, they have the dignity of their own process. And knowing your truth, that when you speak your truth, I know that this is coming from my heart and I'm not responsible for whatever the other person is experiencing. And similarly, they have the right to speak their truth and I get to look at my own stuff. Which brings me to the next one. It's okay. Not only is it okay, it's mandatory to put yourself first, to put your frequency first, because again, it's not about other people. So if you're there feeling empty and therefore projecting things onto other people, right? Blaming, um, resenting, being angry with other people. It comes from an empty place. So it's not only okay, it's mandatory to not have an empty place inside, to fill your cup, to do what excites you, to do what brings you joy, to do that which makes you feel free and empower because you can only give that which you have. You can't give that which you don't have. So if you, whenever we are not praising, whenever we're not giving and sharing, is because whenever we're not generous, is because we feel a lack of, right? We go into, well, I'm not gonna say thank you or that this person did a good job. They never praised me, why should I praise them? But when you're there in that full state, it's like, I wanna give to the world. You contribute to a better world to something so much greater than yourself and yourself and those around you. So not only is it okay to give to yourself and to put yourself first, it is crucial and mandatory. The next one, because putting yourself first is likely to ruffle some feathers. This is an important one and that is you're never alone. Even if everybody leaves you, you're never alone. And this is a really a deep concept to understand that no child or human or person is ever orphaned because there's always the support of the divine mother earth and father sky and whatever resonates with you maybe it's life god um, life force the universe whatever it is for you but we look for love in all the wrong places we look for our human mothers and fathers to be able to love us in the way that we need which they can do because they're only human and they can fulfill all of our needs. So understanding that you're never alone and somebody not showing up for you. And the reason I'm going into early caregivers because that's often where a lot of our traumas are. So looking into our early caregivers for love and the validation wasn't the place to look for that. And can we just look at them as siblings, as somebody that doesn't know more than we do? and connect to that Divine Mother and the Divine Father whose unconditional love we seek and we, we can actually feel because we feel that through ourselves, moving, because it's always there. So this is a bit of a deep concept, but really 
tuning into that and trying to cultivate that. If I could do that from the age of 12, I would be in a really different place. But now I get to ask myself, how do I get to cultivate that every day? Because whenever we feel even a little bit of aloneness, that means we're disconnected. And how can we connect back to that? Speaking of triggers, feeling, speaking when we feel alone and disconnected, number six that I would tell myself would be that it's not real. Whatever you think is real is not real. It's all about shifting consciousness, all about seeing something from a different perspective. That you don't have to make a big deal out of that thing you think is so such a big deal about because bring back the previous points it's never about you whenever you feel less than deprived alone is because you're not connected is because you're not putting yourself first it's not real and you get to shift it and I got to that place of well it's not real so what's the point it's not real so you get to play with it it's like if you have sand it's like well what's the point of building a sand castle since the tide's gonna come in and it's just gonna get washed away because it's fun because you get to because you get to play with the sand and see what you can create out of it and without getting attached to the outcome because it doesn't matter but it does in that moment and you get to have so much fun with it so those are my six things that I would share with a younger version of myself what are those for you or maybe just one thing if you're open to sharing what is the one thing that could have shifted your life drastically if you knew this at the age of 12 13. so i'm looking to hear looking forward to hearing your comments and i am wishing you guys such a powerful day because this video was really just about empowerment and how can you empower yourself and how can you bring those messages whatever came up for you maybe it's more than one maybe if you're not open to sharing it just looking into how can you bring those messages to that younger version of yourself during that inner child work of what if I always knew this? What if this knowledge was always in my core and I can bring this knowledge back to myself and I can live from that place? Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.